Welcome AP Calculus BC students to video number two covering Euler's method. It will actually be our final video as we take a look at this very powerful tool that will allow us to approximate the solutions to a differential equation. We have a very special differential equation here today. It's one that we could not solve otherwise. So using Euler's method would be really the only means by which we could approximate a solution at this point in our calculus journey together. So we're going to take a look at this example two out of my notes and I'm going to scroll down here and we see we are to consider the differential equation dy over dx equals x minus y with the initial condition y of zero equals one. Use Euler method with four equal step sizes to approximate y of two. And as I said before, we haven't discussed how to solve a variety of differential equations that have this form. The fact that x and y are being subtracted actually poses a pretty big issue as far as our Calculus 2 knowledge is concerned. If you continue to take more calculus, and maybe go into Calculus 4, often called differential equations, I'm sure you'll knock out these kinds of differential equations with ease. But right now we're going to play the game that we really don't have a way of solving it, so let's approximate instead. I would love to know what would the value of this function y be when x is 2? That's what we're thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our, our table. That's how I like to approach Euler's method, as explained in the previous video. I start with an x value and a y value, and then I like to compute the slope value, and that will give me enough information to have the equation of a line. And then we just repeat the process with another iteration. Now, if you watched video one, you might remember that I had a dy value here and a capital Y. Those are not going to be required to answer the question that example two has posed. So I won't do anything extra. So I will start off with our ordered pair 0, 1 and I'm going to place those two values where x and y are, respectively. And then I'm going to be able to compute my slope, which is just 0 minus 1. And of course, that would give us negative 1. And there are all the ingredients for your tangent line. So y minus the y value would equal the slope, quantity x minus the x value. And if you work on this just a wee bit, you could get y by itself, which is probably helpful because we're going to be using it in just a little bit. And by the time I add that 1 over, that's our y equation. Now, I want to do something here. I want to go ahead and, first of all, go to the next iteration. And I'm going to uh, show you something graphically. First of all, we're going to have to figure out what is our step size because you'll notice in this problem it wasn't given to you like in the previous example. So you might have to do a little detective work. You know that if I'm dealing with four equal steps and I want to get from a 0 to a 2, it only makes sense that that is going to be involving a half a step each time. And then I have four steps that would take me to two. So that's going to be very helpful because you just basically have discovered what your y value, or sorry, your x values are going to be throughout the uh, bulk of the problem. So the next x would be one half. Now, the predominant question to, to go decimal or to go fraction. Typically, if you're dealing with a non-calculator assisted problem, you're going to probably find it's easier to go fraction. I know that might seem kind of a surprise to you, but that's the route that I'm going to go ahead and take here. And I certainly um, um, suggest that you at least give that a shot because it might be a little bit easier for you. Now to find the new y value. That's where we would plug our 1 half in for this x. And of course, y equaling negative half plus one, right? If I have to work that over here to the side to ensure that I get the right result, I have a positive half. So that would be the new y value. Now, 
I would like to take you to my graphing calculator, and I have it all ready for you. I'm just going to slide that bad boy in. Here he is. Hopefully you see him. And what I have done here is I have actually used the power of my TI Inspire to sketch a graph of this solution curve. And it wasn't real hard to do that. If I click on this, I might be able to show you its attributes. And I would just basically, to do this, I would have gone into the menu, graph entry, and I would have chosen DiffEQ option eight. And it would have brought up this particular window and my differential equation y prime, you see the little prime mark there, was defined as x minus y. Now the TI Inspire is a little finicky when you do these and you have to type in a one um, after your y to make sure that you isolate in on what that value really is. It's a y value and, and we need that particular one. You can see we have it over here as well. And I went ahead and put the initial condition 0, 1. I had to alter a few other settings to make sure that I had a nice curve that was nice and connected. I basically just changed my plot step to have more points in between each other. Now, what I have gone ahead and done is I have graphed our first tangent line. Remember that point zero one right there he is. That's the tangent line that goes through that point. And the problem with this tangent line is it's a very lousy line to use to approximate two on the curve because two would be right about here. And if I use this line to approximate, I'm going to get an answer probably about like negative one or so. I don't think that's the answer to the value on the curve. The value on the curve looks somewhere, oh, it looks like a little bit larger than one, maybe one and a quarter perhaps. So that's why Euler's method is so wonderful because it will redirect this line and get it closer to the curve. That's the whole point. How do we redirect that line? We use another iteration of Euler's method. So let's drag this bad boy back out of the way. Maybe, maybe it'll drag. If it doesn't drag, then you know we're all just going to have a terrible, terrible time here. So can I drag this? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. There it goes. <laughs> now we're going to go back and we're going to find our new slope. So I'm going to take my x of one half and my y of one half, which interestingly enough gives us a slope of zero. This might be a little bit easy to work with then. So you're going to take y minus the y value equal the slope of zero quantity x minus the x value of a half. And then that is going to in turn result into y equal a half. Hopefully that makes sense and you all see that pretty easily. So now I would go to my third iteration. I'm going to try to use a different color for each iteration. And I'm going to use another step. A step size of a half takes us to one. And my y value, you guessed it, is going to be one half. I really don't have to plug one in for this equation because there is no x. I compute my slope by using my dy dx equation. And one minus a half, of course, is a half. And then I can go about writing the equation of my next line, which is y minus a half equals the slope of one half quantity x minus one. If I were to get y by itself here, distributing the one half, I would have a negative one half and then adding over a positive one half. Uh, oops, let me make sure I do this right. I would have uh, an, um, y minus a half. Yes, y minus a half, just making sure that I did this right. y minus a half equals one half x minus one. So when I distribute this one half, I think I'm going to get zero here. I think I'm going to get y equal one half x. Now let's return to the graph. I'm going to try to remember these two equations. They won't be too difficult to remember. And if I were to throw in a few more um, equations. Let's throw in our good friend. Uh, I don't want uh, a differential equation in, so let's go ahead and graph entry and change it to function. So if I graph y equal 1 half, that's the redirection of that line to hopefully get me a value. And where was my 2 again? Right about here. I would say that this red approximation is a lot better than that blue approximation 
for the value that's going to be right there, right? And you got to remember, we don't know what this blue curve looks like. That's the whole idea because we couldn't solve it. I think that's pretty good. Now notice that this red line is not a tangent line. So I have to be very careful. I don't want to call it a tangent because it's not attached to the curve. However, it would have been tangent right here at that point um, if it had a different y-intercept, of course. So if I were to go back in and graph my next line in my third iteration, which is 1 half y equal 1 half x, we see that this black line is doing yet a better job. I'm getting closer and closer to my intended value. We just have to keep doing it until the problem tells us to stop. So let's move this back out of the way and go back in and use our next iteration, which is going to use a y value, our next uh, value of 1 half again. So 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And if I use my equation here, y equaling 1 half times x, or 1 half times 3 halves, I'm going to get 3 fourths as my new y value. Now there might be some teachers who are a little bit hardcore about this and say that they don't like the fact that you're using uh, multiple versions of the equation that has x's and y's in it. And I can understand that and I can respect that. If they're very, very picky about that, problem solved. You just simply put subscripts with each of these and now you don't have any confusion about which y and which x goes with which particular situation. Okay. Now for this dy dx here, I'm going to take my three halves. I'm going to subtract three fourths. Uh, this would be the same as six fourths minus three fourths, uh, which is three fourths. So that's my new slope. And at this point, I can write my equation of my line. I'll go ahead and use my subscript of four there. So y four minus three quarters equals my slope of three quarters, quantity x four minus my three halves. And now if I get y4 by itself here, forgot a subscript there, didn't I? Then I would say I've got three quarters times x sub 4. And then let's see, what do I have here? I might have to work this out. Negative 9 eighths is what I'm thinking, plus three quarters, or six eighths would be negative uh, three-eighths, right? Sounds good. So there I go with my equation for the fourth iteration. And what happens next is if we go another step, that means that we would be, ta-da, at our value of two, which is kind of where we we're supposed to stop, right? So y of 2 is going to be approximately equal to what I have if I plug 2 into my y sub 4 equation. And this is another reason why I really like and respect the use of the subscripts, because that distinguishes the, the y value without the subscript, which is our end-all, be-all value that lies on that curve. So if I were to plug 2 in, I would end up with 3 fourths times 2 minus 3 eighths. Let's see, that's 6 fourths minus 3 eighths, which would be 12 eighths minus 3 eighths, which is 9 eighths, right? It's approximately 1.125, um, if you want to think of it like that. Um, it looks like that that was pretty darn close to what we had in my graph, but let's take a look. Remember, 3 fourths x minus 3 eighths is what I'm going to be sketching next. So one last time, if I go in and graph 3 fourths x minus 3 eighths, this would be our final tangent line that does the best job of all. I know this is sort of a traffic jam going on here, but again, Look along the x-axis, 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2, which is right here. Look how close that purple line approximates that brown lines, that brown curve's value. So it's a pretty good approximation. We're not going to discuss 
how accurate it is. That's not the point of this phase of Euler's method. And besides, we don't have the means by which to solve that differential equation by pencil and paper. But we can rest assured that this uh, 9 eighths is certainly pretty darn accurate be because we said that it was going to be um, a value that's a little bit above 1, which is right about there, right? It's a smidge above 1. I hope this certainly helps your understanding of Euler's method. That's really all there is to it. Uh, we're going to branch off and talk about some interesting things with logistic differential growth in our next series of videos. So we hope you stick around for those. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.